No ma'am, couldn't be me. I, mm-mm, mm-mm. It's your girl Jay and today I am here with my October wrap-up for 2023. I didn't read too many books this month. I read six but I did give pretty high ratings except for one. So I'm gonna deem that as a successful October. I'm just getting around to filming this a little bit late. It's actually November 15th right now when I'm filming this because uh big announcement I got a new job which is super exciting. So I have been prepping for that interview and then um you know trying to transition um, through that. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have to talk about is Your Lonely Nights by Adam Sass. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. So this follows Cole and Deary who are as close as two best friends can be without being boyfriends. A famous serial killer named Mr. Sandman re-emerges after years of no killings and these two are blamed for the death of their fellow queer club members. In order to clear their names, they decide that they are going to figure out who Mr. Sandman is before they strike again, and it's the story of that. I had so much fun with this book. It was honestly the perfect first October read. I was flipping between a 4.5 or a 4, but I ultimately ended up going with the 4. There was just something missing to push it over to that 4.5, but I honestly can't really put my finger on it. I did really love both Deary and Cole as main characters. They were a lot of fun to read their point of views from. I loved the banter that these two teens were able to dish out at any given time. I'm not gonna lie, both of them were a little bit unlikable, but those are the characters that I always end up loving, so I couldn't help but root for both of them and their friendship. I loved trying to piece together who the murderer was, and I did end up figuring out who it was, but very, very close to the reveal, so that didn't hinder my enjoyment in any way. I also adored the epilogues. This is my first Adam Sass book, but if his other books are anything like this, I will definitely be checking out more of his writing. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Perfect first book for October. The next book I have is Forgive Me Not by Jennifer Baker, and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars as well. This follows 15-year-old Violetta, who decided to drive drunk one night and ended up killing her 7-year-old sister. She is now incarcerated, and she is awaiting the verdict from her family on whether or not she is guilty or she is going to have to participate in the trials, which is a task or group of tasks to prove that she is worthy of forgiveness. The concept of this book was very intriguing to me. I thought it was very interesting that the victim's family were the ones able to decide the fate of the accused. The story is told in dual point of views between Violetta as well as her older brother Vince, which I thought was an amazing way to see not only how the accused was feeling, but also how her verdict was affecting the entire family. I think that my biggest disappointment with this was the trials themselves. I think I was just expecting something, I don't know, darker than what we got based off of the synopsis. It was very meek and mild, which I was expecting more like a Hunger Games kind of situation, which I don't know why I was, that's just what was in my head. It also took a very long time to actually get to the trials, which made the story seem to drag a little bit. I also think that the book was a little bit too long for the story being told, but I don't think that that really affected my enjoyment overall. I'm definitely interested in reading more from this author because I did really enjoy this. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up, I have Play to Win by Jolie Slaughter. This is another 4 out of 5 star read. So this follows Miriam Butler, who has been trying to make ends meet since her husband Leo left her eight years ago. Then, one night, she wins the lottery and everything changes. She only has one loose end, and that is her husband Leo, who seems to be back in town wanting to rekindle their romance. I read Bet On It by this author and I really loved the writing style, so I was excited to pick this one up. We also got cameo from Walter and Aja in this, so I loved seeing them again. This was an interesting concept for a second chance romance. I personally think that she forgave Leo far too quickly because I personally would have wanted groveling at my feet. Like if my husband left me eight years ago with no form of communication, I would not even be thinking about rekindling anything with that man. Especially if he was only coming back after he found out that I won the lottery. No ma'am, couldn't be me. I, mm-mm, mm-mm. 
I did really like Miri's character though. I listened to this on audiobook and I do think the narrator did an excellent job with her character. There wasn't as much smut as I was expecting based off of her other book that I read and this was definitely a slow burn which I was expecting because of the other book. I still think she let him off too easy and that's all I'm gonna say but I did really like this four out of five stars. Next I read Pride and Prejudice and Pittsburgh by Rachel Lippincott and this is another one I gave four out of five stars. So this follows Audrey who has been feeling a little bit stuck in life after her boyfriend dumps her and she is put on the wait list for an art school. Suddenly she finds herself transported back to 1812 where she meets Lucy, a young woman in society who is waiting a marriage proposal from a man twice her age who she does not love. As these two spend a little bit more time together, their feelings grow into something more than friendship and it's their story. This was so much fun. I've read a couple of Rachel's books at this point and I love her writing style. I just find it so easy to read. I loved both of these characters. Both Lucy and Audrey are so lovable and you couldn't help rooting for them. I enjoyed both of their point of views. They are just so different from each other in every way but they complement each other so well. I love how Lucy was able to teach Audrey how to adapt in her time period but Audrey was also able to teach Lucy about 2023 and the progress that women have had in the future. I loved how this was a friendship to lovers. I'm a big fan of that trope and I loved seeing them grow closer as their story progressed and watching them fall for each other. The yearning was immaculate. I was squealing just waiting for them to get together. It was definitely a slow burn romance, but it was worth every second for that realization to come between the two of them. This is definitely not a retelling of Pride and Prejudice, so if that is your expectation, you will be very disappointed. But nonetheless, this was a lot of fun. I definitely recommend it. I gave it a four out of five stars. This is where my ratings started to go down. Next up, I have A Guide to the Dark. This is by Miriam Matoy, and I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. This follows Mira and Layla who after crashing their car are stranded in the Wildwood Motel in Indiana. Mira starts noticing some very weird things going on with the room that they are staying in and is definitely feeling a little bit uncomfortable. Layla doesn't notice anything weird about room 9 but she is desperate to protect her friend. Then they learn that eight people have died in the room that they are staying in and they all may be connected in some way. They team up with a few others at the motel to ensure that Mira does not become the ninth victim of the room. I listened to this on audiobook and I do think that the narrators did a really great job with the characters' voices. The room also had its own voice as well, which I thought was very interesting. I think that the concept of this book was intriguing. I thought that the exploration of grief and guilt was very well done, but something about this book didn't hook me the way that I wanted it to. I think that it was Layla. She was hopelessly in love with Mira, but Mira didn't know that, and Layla was just so incredibly jealous and possessive about everything when it pertained to Mira that it just rubbed me the wrong way. The book was a very quick read though and I did finish it in one sitting. Overall I do think that it was an interesting read about processing grief but it is categorized as horror which it definitely is not in my opinion so if you're going to read this book don't go into it thinking that it is a horror book because you will be disappointed like I was. But I did give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars so it's not a bad book. It just wasn't what I was expecting based off of the genre category that it was put under. The next book I'm very upset about because I thought I was gonna love this book but I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. It is The Color of Dragons. This is by R.A. Salvatore and Erica Lewis. So this follows Maggie who has newfound powers that she is having trouble navigating while she is also helping her father figure pretend to be a magician. When Prince Jory watches their show one night, he ends up inviting them back to the royal palace. There, Maggie meets Griffin, who is the king's champion living inside the walled city. He is tasked with fighting Dragnox in the kingdom's arena, and their meeting changes both of their lives, and it's kind of the story of that. I didn't love this, but I didn't hate it either. I was a little bit disappointed because I thought a lot of this book was going to be dragon based and it definitely was not. 
I also found it to be very slow. It dragged a lot, but the ending was so rushed and fast-paced. It was kind of like whiplash. We do get alternating points of views between Maggie and Griffin, but it was also switching from first person to third person, which just made the reading very clunky in my opinion. I did like Maggie and Griffin as characters though, and I did like following their stories. I definitely think that the book had potential to be something amazing. It just fell a little flat for me, so I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those are the six books that I read for the month of October 2023. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. Hopefully, I will have my November TBR up soon. I will film that and edit it as soon as possible. I'm sorry. See y'all in my next video. Goodbye!